All right, now I'm ready to cut off. I extended the work out just a little bit uh, in the chuck, so I have, I'm not going to hit anything. There'll be no interference. And I've got the Iskar cutoff tool mounted in the Alora's tool post, and I have checked it with the uh, uh, depth gauge here. Remember, I want a, a half, or with just with a, a ruler. We want, we want a half, uh, eighth inch for the flange, so I'm going to cut it off at about 316, so I have a little bit to face. In other words, this isn't the final pass here because you don't always get a, a real smooth cut with a cutoff tool. You may or may not, but I'm going to cut it off. I will catch that with a wooden stick uh, in the bore here. But I don't like to have the work go flying and the brass is so soft sometimes it gets nicked. So here we go. feeding. This, this, is, this isn't power feeding. This is the grab, this is brass, you know. You'll hear it squawking. We're getting close. You can cut this off with a hand hacksaw also, or take it to your bandsaw and saw it off. And there we are, we've parted it, it's separated. Now I've got the work held uh, end for end in the three jaw chuck, and I'm going to face off the flange so that burr comes off first. And I'm going to face it off until I've got a flange that is one eighth thick. This is not a critical dimension, but I'll try to get it, and I'm not going to measure it with a micrometer. I'm just going to check this with a ruler. I'm feeding out with the cross feed, and I believe I'll stop and check it with a ruler now. I've just taken two passes. One more pass will do it. Feed it kind of slowly for the final pass. I don't think I took off enough. No, one more pass. Take that little uh, countersink and clean the bore from this side, chamfer it a little bit. Now just one final thing I'm going to do is put a chamfer on that uh, flange, but I have to extend it out a little bit from the chuck. I'm a little bit too close for comfort there for safety. I'm going to take my big file. Give it a couple strokes right there to chamfer it. My smaller file to chamfer it right here. I'm dangerously close. You may not want to do this. It's just a little scary. Run your file in there and knock that bluing off. Or the lemmer cloth will work. That's the only surface that I have not machined on this. Just has this is just sandpaper going to lay in here. All right, let's take that over to the bench and look at it. Okay, now we're over on the bench uh, making a final inspection, and uh, I always take the reamer and uh, and like run it through from both uh, directions. You know, if you've got any burrs, to clean it up and make sure it's a sharp one. As you get into dull reamers, you're going to find that they uh, uh, will size your hole under size so that feels pretty good now I put a couple drops of oil on there a minute ago and I'll try that um, uh, I'm using this as a plug gauge because it's right on uh, 500 thousandths and we got a real good fit and it's not sloppy and I think I already showed you that we had uh, 
the dimension here right on to the thousandth and the other dimensions do not matter. I just miked this flange here and I'm almost a hundred and forty thousand so I'm about fifteen thousandths over. I could put it back on the lathe if I wanted to if it mattered and uh, take off a few more thousandths off the flange because it's just a little bit long there and uh, the overall length if you remember was supposed to be uh, one inch so I'm quite awkward trying to get in here. I'm 120,000 so I am uh, 20 thousandths over and I would take that off the flange if it was necessary for where I'm going to use this. Now I hope you followed uh, all the different steps I did uh, on there and why I did them and uh, uh, I was glad I didn't uh, produce any scrap while you were watching but you know sometimes that happens too. But if you're unsure of yourself, take light cuts when you're working up to the final dimension. And that's how you make a bushing or any project that is similar. Always start with your longer piece. See, this would be most difficult to hold in the chuck for some of these operations. You know, how would you hold it to turn this down other than uh, put it on a mandrel? So if there's any interest in this, I'd like to uh, present a few more uh, real simple little projects like this that can be done in just a few minutes. Now without talking or filming, I probably could have done this in, uh, oh, 12 or 15 minutes, I suppose. A lot of your time is consumed in setting up the machine and finding the tools and, and so on. Okay, that concludes this little uh, episode. Uh, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. This is a short addendum. Uh, to the movie even though I, I just signed off. It bugged me so much that I was a little bit over on that uh, overall length so I I uh, came clear down from my computer and took a couple more passes. Now I'm four thousandths over which is just a couple of hairs and that's certainly now within the tolerance but uh, I was ashamed to not have it a little closer than what I showed you there and uh, let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit for I'm not sure what this camera will do here and I was reasonably satisfied with the finish on that. I guess that's as close as this camera will go. So long again.